डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी Namaskar friends welcome to Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar Open University today we are going to learn about the bluest eye which forms the part of your bachelor of arts english literature syllabus it's paper number 5 syba a study of novel it consists of unit number 15 16 and 17 so today we are going to learn about the liter literary form novel the concept of discrimination african american literature we are going to learn something about the author tony morrison about the novel the bluest eye then you will have some self assessment questions and uh, i'll be giving you some links for further reading now as you know uh, friends uh, literature is made up of various forms like novel poetry drama novella short stories etc usually a novel is a long work of narrative fiction written in prose form it is narrated it is mostly fictional work that is uh, lesser elements of autobiographies autobiographical like autobiographical elements are few and it is written in prose form loosely we can describe prose form uh, with uh, you can differentiate that prose is something which is not poetry this is a very loose definition prose does not include metrical patterns for example now when we come to english literature daniel defoe's robinson crusoe and samuel richardson's pamela or virtue rewarded are considered to be the very first novels or uh, these are the novels we can say that uh, with these novels began the era of english novels in british literature now a novel is formed of various components there are certain ingredients if we find that we can call novel Uh, the those are characters setting plot narrative style themes symbolism motifs etc now we come to the types of novels novels are of various types you can recognize the type of a novel from its major themes historical novel usually talks about social condition of a particular age the mannerisms and uh, the characteristics of a particular place and a particular period or age war and peace uh, or waverly for example by walter scott are the novels uh, are the examples of the historical novel picaresque picaresque novels are uh, about a hero a rogue who belongs to the low social class and then uh, he finds his way out in the corrupt society is the example of a picaresque novel so we have the adventures of huckleberry finn Now we come to Buildings Roman. Buildings Roman is a novel which deals with the main character's formative years and his uh, mental growth and psychological growth. So we have Jane Eyre as a Buildings Roman novel. Sentimental novel deals with the emotional and intellectual uh, intellectual concepts of sentiments. Uh, the vicar of wakefield is a is an example of this sentimental novel. Gothic novel Uh, novels are again interesting they deal with ghost vampire haunted castles so wuthering heights can be one example epistolary novels are written in uh, a series of documents or mostly are written in form of letters so we have ellis walker's the color purple as epistolary novel even richardson's pamela is an epistolary novel detective as the name suggests so we have the example uh, the adventures of sherlock holmes it is very famous detective novels romantic novels are again uh, jane austen's emma and pride and prejudice are uh, romantic novels now we come to the we come before we come to the core of the bluest eye it is very important for you to know the concept of discrimination how it all actually starts so the unjust or biased treatment of different categories of people bases on uh, race their class caste or gender so on basis of these criterias when you receive unjust prejudiced or biased treatment from other people then you are called you are discriminated now the concept of untouchability which existed in india is uh, uh, the dalits the scheduled caste 
uh, they were considered to be untouchables. Now, the concept untouchability does not only relate to that, okay, you cannot touch this person, but it goes beyond that because it uh, produces an averse situation, mental state in the people who suffer from that. Anti-Semitism, uh, we all know that uh, Jews were uh, Holocaust and uh, there was this racial and ethnic discrimination. So, uh, around 60 lakhs of Jews were Holocaust due to this anti-Semitism phenomenon. Now, we come to the racial segregation. Segregation means differentiation, not including, not considering someone as equal to you. Now, this existed in Americas in the early uh, 18th to 19th century, even before that. Again, uh, uh, segregation or discrimination due to race and ethnicity led to racial segregation in Americas. The, uh, you must know the, the hierarchy, the pyramid of the hier hierarchy and uh, the white man is placed at the top of the pyramid. Then comes the white woman, then comes the black man and then comes at the bottom of the pyramid is black woman. So, you can uh, from this you can understand the situation of black women and how they suffer. Now, we come to African American literature, but, but before that a brief history that how it all began. Now, whites considered themselves to be superior as a superior human being, superior race and they considered themselves to be civilized. Anyone darker than them, that is if the skin complexion is darker, then they are considered to be naturally inferior race, they are considered to be primitive and uncivilized, that is someone who needs grooming and someone who is not up to the mark. The middle passage is a very important aspect in the history of Afri African American uh, country, countries. The middle passage, uh, an estimated of 107 lakhs Africans were forcefully transported from Africa's to Americas for slaveries to work in, uh, to make the, these people work in the plantations. And due to these sufferings, there uh, the slave narratives emerged. The emergence of uh, slave narratives, we can say that it was an human urge for freedom and freedom of expression. Now, we come to Harlem Renaissance. In the 1920s and 1930s, there was a kind of awakening and uh, an art artistic circle, intellectual artistic circle existed in Harlem because many of them uh, migrated from South America to the North America for betterment, for industrial purposes and all that. So, Harlem Renaissance is actually considered to be the awakening and the waves were created for uh, blacks that they started speaking for their own rights. Now, we come to black is beautiful or black arts movement. This slogan uh, became bl very famous, black is beautiful became very famous during uh, 1960s. and. Uh, during this time, black women started uh, writing uh, their works and they uh, were truly instrumental in bringing the, uh, the, f the concepts, the issues, the concerns related to black women into the limelight. Now, we come to African American women's writing in 1970s. Three important works by black women, African American women were published during uh, in the year 1970. The first one is the novel of our concern, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison was published in 1970. Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings was published in 1970 and also uh, The Third Life of Grange Copeland by Alice Walker was published in 1970 and one more anthology, The Black Woman by Tony Ked Bambara was also published in 1970s. So, 1970 was a very important year in the uh, African American literature and African American women's writing. Now, we come to the author Tony Morrison, you can see in the picture, uh, she looks like this, she is an African American woman born in 1931. Uh, Ohio is a Midwestern USA state. 
She is a professor of humanities. She is a novelist, essayist, and editor. She has been an editor at Random House, where in this capacity, she was responsible to bring uh, more, more and more works of black authors, African American authors, into limelight. She has been the first African American woman to win Nobel Prize in Literature in 1993. For her novel Beloved, she has won the Pulitzer Prize in 1988. Uh, President, the former president of USA, Barack Obama, presented her with the Presiden Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012. She has also been awarded the Penn Award for Achievement in American Fiction in 2016. She has been an author of 11 novels, The Bluest Eye, the first in the installment. Sula is the second novel, 1973, Song of Solomon, 1977, Beloved in 1987, which is her most acclaimed work. And the last novel uh, till now has been God Help the Child in 2015. Now we come to the reception of novel, how the novel was received when it was first published. When it was first published in 1970, uh, it received minimal critical attention. It was banned from schools, curriculum, syllabus due to, it, due to some obvious reasons of its content. The Bluest Eye also appeared as the 15th out of a list of 100 most challenged books uh, in the recent decade by American Library Association. By the end of 1970, a positive uh, review was written by the New York Times and later on it was placed as reference book for black studies departments in universities. Euro-American, then critics started noticing her work. Euro-American critics concentrated on her, criticized her work by saying that it was uh, very loosely written, the language was very basic and all that. Whereas African-American critics related to her work because it was their story, they could relate to it very well and they concentrated on the characters and the development of the uh, story and the depiction of the novel. So that was a positive turning point for this novel. It was later on praised for writing about the colonization of mind, that how colonization actually takes place, not only physically, but mentally also, psychologically also. The novel was later on adapted as uh, uh, plays to be performed in the, uh, on the stage in New York several times. Now we come to the novel Bluest Eye. And I would like uh, you to draw your attention on this thing and see if you can read it. Moving forward, try reading this. I would like to read it for you as well. Here is the house. It is green and white. It has a red door. It is very pretty. Here is the family. Mother, father, Dick and Jane live in the green and white house. They are very happy. Now friends, this is a primer. Primer used in American schools. Uh, nursery children are taught the very first communication that happens through nursery uh, children is through primers. They are taught language through these primers. Indian equivalent we can find in nursery rhymes. So what, what is nursery rhymes? Children are first for the first time uh, taught any language. So this is the primer used in American schools, in white and black schools as well. So it portrays a very happy picture that there is one house which is green and white in color. It has a red door, so it, uh, a fantasy type house. It is very pretty. Here is the perfect family, mother, father, Dick and Jane. So you have mother, you have father, you have a uh, brother and Jane is the main person. Live in the green and white house and they are very happy. But here, if you have noticed till now, the same thing is written, but there is no punctuation. There are no punctuation marks, uh, no capitals no spaces, everything is crammed, so you get a feeling of uh, confusion, uh, anxiousness and incoherence. You cannot decipher what is written. So welcome to the world of the bluest eye. Here is the picture of, you can picturize Pecola, the main character of the novel. 
and here is a white doll with blonde or yellow hair, blue eyes and white skin, red lips, perfect. Now we come to the novel, the, uh, the cover page of the novel, Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye, you can see a black girl of African American descent and she is not very pretty when you compare her to the white doll she has blue eyes. So, this phenomenon is going to develop later on in our presentation. We come to the setting and plot of the novel. The bluest eye is set in Ohio, the hometown of Toni Morrison. She has taken the same place because she is familiar with that and she can develop her story very well, her characters very well after the great depression in uh, 1940. So, 1929 to 1939 are the years of great depression that America faced. She is writing this novel in 65, 69 published in 1970, but the novel is set in the year 1940. So, the black people have started migrating towards north for, uh, for their livelihood and for better opportunities uh, that lie in the north. In this scenario, there is a black poor young girl, due to her mannerisms and dark skin, she is regarded as ugly and due to that, she develops an inferiority complex in her psyche. She has a disturbed home life, she has abusive parents and she is badly treated by the community as well. So, she, she is ill treated at home as well as her classmates ill treat her and the community also treat her badly. She wishes for blue eyes because that is the feature will make her equal to the whites and she considers blue eyes to be panacea. Panacea is something uh, is a solution or remedy to a disease. She considers that being black, being ugly is not natural, it is a disease which needs to be cured and so, she wishes to have blue eyes, which is uh, not possible, which is illogical, but that is her wish. She is a young girl. She is raped by her father. She is impregnated by her father. Her baby dies and eventually, she succumbs to insanity and is treated, treated as a pariah, an outcast by her own community. Now, we come to the major characters of the novel. The protagonist, you can call her main character or protagonist, though she does not acquire the qualities of protagonist, because she is most of the times passive, she is not strong minded, her grooming is not uh, perfect, she does not get uh, perfect values a perfect home environment that can lead to her mental and psychological development. But that was the main aim of the author when she developed the character of Piccola. Piccola Breedlove is a protagonist, 11 years old, black girl. She is lonely and suffers passively. She suffers the abuse of parents and classmates and believes herself to be ugly and wishes to have blue eyes. On the other hand, Claudia McTeer is Piccola's friend. She is 9 years old, but she is strong minded. She is against the white beauty standards. Remember the white doll that we saw? Claudia McTeer is also an African American, but she hates the white dolls that are given to her as gifts, as Christmas gifts. And there is one event uh, incident in the novel where Claudia tears the doll apart because she thinks that what it is that exists in the doll, but not in me. Why I am ugly, why I am not beautiful and why this doll is beautiful, just because she has white skin, blonde hair and blue eyes. We come to Frida McTeer, she is Claudia's sister, 10 years old and seen to defend both Pecola and Claudia. Now, three major characters, three of them are African Americans, all the three girls and very young girls. So, this uh, provides a platform that how the story is going to develop. Cholly Breedlove is Pecola's father, 
who in his young age when he was uh, in adolescence he was humiliated by the whites and that has made an impact a negative impact on his mind and he he's frustrated he's violent he rapes his daughter picola and he's dangerously free so he does not fit the normal category of a father a father is assumed to protect the children but here something happens that is totally inhuman we can if we can say that that the father rapes her daughter now we come to pauline breed love pauline or polly breed love is picola's mother she works for a well to do white family and she considers her, herself to be ugly now you get the picture how it all comes down that the father and the mother who are considered to be the pillars uh, of support for children they are responsible for grooming but here they are too too devastated to groom their child so pauline breed love thinks that she is ugly she is fascinated by romantic movies and white skinned heroines and she has herself said to picola that you are ugly and picola has believed that oh i am ugly i can i cannot do anything about it unless and until i get blue eyes for myself now we come to soap head church he is a fake mystic a mystic is someone who communicates who claims to communicate directly with god he harms picola but how we'll come to it later now we come to the structure and narrative style of the novel the novel is divided into four parts autumn winter spring and summer as the name suggests the events in the novel are totally opposite they take they do not take place as per the season autumn is considered to be a season of harvest but unfortunately that is the season in which pecola's baby dies spring is considered to be the season of rebirth rejuvenation but ironically that is the season where claudia remembers of uh, being whipped by her mother and uh, pecola's uh, pecola gets raped in this season now we come to the narrators there are three narrators two of them are the voices of claudia claudia when she is a child and uh, when she grows up two voices of claudia so this novel is narrated by a 9 year old so we have children's point of view in mind she focuses on key events of picola's life and also on the past events that are unrolling before her eyes so novel juggles between the past and the present events narrated by claudia now we come to an omniscient narrator there is a voice a third person narrator who is an all knowing entity and where the child claudia misses out of course she is a child and she cannot know all the all the things that are happening around her so that are sufficed by the omniscient narrator further the events also are not presented chronologically instead they are linked by the voices and memories of the two narrators the novel is also full of black musical traditions like spirituals blues jazz you have songs in it etc it is full of black vernacular uh, which is a dialect phrases and idioms which are peculiar to african american uh, country background and people the novel is uh, coming of age you can say it's a coming of age novel because it deals with a child and how she grows up to be and it's a it has a tragic ending we can say that this one is interesting it is anti buildings roman buildings roman we know that it's about a main character who develops gradually from young age to adulthood and uh, the morality the moral values and psychological growth is also shown of the character but here we call this novel anti buildings roman because the main characters yes of course it deals with the formative years but the psychological state deteriorates it does not enhance we can say that so we call this novel a buildings roman now we come to the themes themes are the main ideas that are uh, that pervades the whole work the physical beauty whiteness 
as the beauty standard white skin blue eyes blonde hair are considered necessary features that define beauty if you do not have this then oh you are ugly nothing can happen to you uh, god help you that was the scenario that existed in america of 16th to 19th century racism is also an important theme i would like to read this quote if you are white you are right if you are brown you can stick around if you are black get back this quote is by calvin hunton in his 1965 work on sex and racism in america so this says a lot that you have all the rights just because you are white you cannot be wrong you are the powerful entity if you are brown okay you can be somewhere around something can happen to you but if you are black skin nothing can happen to you what you have to be dictated you don't have your own mind you don't have your own soul you don't have your own body everything is controlled is governed is dictated by the whites now we come to identity crisis there is a kind of confusion uncertainty insecurity regarding one's being as we know piccola is the uh tragic sympathetic one who has identity crisis from her childhood oppression of women is also shown in the novel because women go through sexual abuse piccola is abused even frida is abused she is molested by a by a man hostility of black community black community is hostile is indifferent is not sensitive towards these girls so intra racial segregation also comes into place uh so in blacks also if you are slightly lighter complexioned then you feel that oh the darker one is uh, you know to be governed by you so that is the theme these are the themes that exist in the novel we come to the motives and sim- symbols motives are the are the literary devices that uh define the theme for us and symbols are the objects or abs- uh, the objects or things that define the uh, abstract concepts for us so here seasons are, as we have uh, learned earlier the events and happenings of the characters do not match the usual characteristics of seasons vision is an important motive because piccola thinks that if she gets blue eyes it will change the way she is looked at by the world and it will it will also change the way she looks at the world she will be uh conforming to the main white groups if she get the blue eyes scapegoat is a symbol used here piccola is a scapegoat for black community scapegoat is someone who is blamed for others wrong doings others mistakes other f- others faults because they know that piccola is passive she is not going to react she is going to take your dirt so the black community feels clean by shifting their dirt their frustration their violence on piccola bluest eye is the imagery it's a symbol it's a motif that is uh pervading the whole work because the title also says, uh, is of the same name pretty eyes pretty blue eyes big blue pretty eyes blue sky eyes morning glory blue eyes alice and jerry blue story book eyes this is the prayer that piccola makes every night to get the blue eyes and you know why now marigolds are associated this flowers are associated with the safety and well-being of piccola's baby no one wants piccola's baby to live because you know she has been raped by her father piccola's father and her baby's father is the same man so the black community dislikes her hates her no one wishes her baby to live but frida and claudia are, are exceptions they pray for piccola's baby to live just because her baby can counteract the universal values that are imposed on them by the whites white americans we come to the title and conclusion the bluest eye the bluest eye e y e i 
and the I pronoun are the homophones and the title ha creates a kind of a pun. The bluest I we know what it means and I is also bluest, we, the color we refer bluest color also to the wounds that turn blue. You have bruises, it is red and then it gradually turns blue. So, you are hurt, you are very much hurt and bluest eye is Piccola is also the bluest eye, the saddest eye because she is hurt, she feels hurt by the community and by the parents. Neither her mother looked at her nor did the black community and the damage done was total. Now comes the character of Soap Head Church. Soap Head Church as I have told you is a mystic. He claims to have uh, direct communication with God and Piccola goes to him and asks him for blue eyes. She feels that he will grant his wish to get blue eyes. What he does is, he gives a piece of meat to Piccola and asks her to feed it to the dog. Now the dog is disliked by Soaphead Church, so he, he does a trick here. He poisons the meat, he uses Piccola to kill the dog and he has promised that if something happens to the dog, believe that you have got blue eyes. The meat is of course poisoned, Piccola feeds the meat to the dog and dog dies and this triggers, this event triggers a kind of men mental decline because Piccola now thinks that she has actually got blue eyes and when the community is avoiding her, she feels that oh they are jealous because I have got blue eyes, they are not looking at me and mind you, when Piccola complains about her father's rape on her, her mother, Piccola's mother, Pauline Breedlove, she beats her, she does not, she is not ready to believe or even if she believes, she is not ready to take any step. So, everyone ignores her and the damage done was total because Piccola is seen walking up and down, flinging her, f flinging her hands like a bird and she jerks her head on the sound of a drum which is so distant that only she can hear. So, these lines suggest that Piccola has lost her usual mental stability. She succumbs to insanity and this brings out a tragic end to the story. The, what is the relevance of the novel? Uh, Morrison wrote this novel, of course it deals with black women, black girls, but she has clearly said that it does not ident she, uh, her works are not to be termed as only feminist work because she believes in equal existence of men and women in the society and the purpose of the work is to make a statement about the damage that racism creates in people's minds. And in today's time also, I would like to mention that this discrimination exists, only the change has occurred in the degrees or the forms of discrimination, but it does exist when we uh, look around the look around us. These are some of the questions that you can have a look, you can do a kind of self assessment exercise for yourself. Also you can take one question where you can uh, write down your experiences or your friends experiences, you, you can discuss with them. You have come across something which, which can be called an unjust behavior, discriminatory behavior, or prejudiced behavior. So, these are the questions. These are the web resources, the links which you can follow. The first link will lead you to the original text of the bluest eye. I would recommend you to read it and the other are the critical readings of the novel. So, thank you friends. I hope uh, you have been acquainted with the work the bluest eye and you will read it for further references. Thank you, goodbye until next time.